question. Let me ask you a question. I was on another uh, spaces with one of my uh, other sisters, and she was dropping jewels. I want your opinion and perspective about all these Biden followers. What is your like? What is your perspective on that? Because it it it, it, it seems like the reason why I'm asking you that is it seems to me that this man can't do any wrong in the eyes of black folk because he's a Democrat. So, you know, and because he was Obama's vice president. So what do you think about Biden's followers? Yo, I think what it, what it all comes down to, man, is people have got to be black first. They've, they've put in place, um, some psychological damage within black folks years ago when, you know, when they passed that whole civil rights uh, bill. Now, when they passed that whole civil rights bill and along with passing that, they started giving out these government hand downs. You know what I'm saying? You start seeing these uh, um, uh, like welfare, food stamps and all like that, which are, was originally created by us, but they just stole it and um, gave it right hand, hand fed it right back to us a carbon copy of what we've already been doing. Um, and within our community, when, when we had a community. So then it really, you know, along with, you know, with, with, with Biden being a part of that same administration, the Democratic Party that passed these bills, people are Democrats first and they're not black first. I'm talking specifically about black people. They're not black first. They're Democrats first. That's just what it. That's just what it all comes down to. Um, when you when you take a, a a a look at it, man. When he came out, when Biden came out and played these little mind games, he went on a breakfast the um, breakfast club, and and then he 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 challenged blacks. Yo, if you're not black, you're not. You know, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Um, he selects Kamala Harris, you know, which she claims now she claims to be black. Uh, and then you have Stacey Adams over here in Georgia, um, where I'm at. She was going hard for Biden. She was racking up all of these youngsters to go out there and vote for Biden. So when you and he's he selected a a black um, uh, Supreme Court justice, you know, but he uh, but she herself is married to a white man. Cal Kamala Harris is married to a white man. But when we take a look at it, just through imagery, we're saying he's uh, he's got to be doing something for us. Look at who he's surrounded by. He's surrounded by folks that we can see ourselves inside of. Some women, when they look at um, uh, Stacey Adams, they see Stacey Adams in themselves. That you know, so they are going a lot off of imagery and emotionalism, and they're saying, "Yo, he's doing stuff, and he's consistently, supposedly." challenging black folks when all in all he's really not challenging us he's crapping on our faces he won't even touch the subject of reparations um his uh vice president won't she she does not want to do anything for black folks stacy adams is not really touching us the the, the the subject of reparations you know what I'm saying? So she is, the, the, along with that, people are going to be caught up in the emotionalism versus just looking at the plain old facts, right? Just looking at what's been done constructively for black people. What has Biden and his administration done constructively for black people? He hasn't done anything constructively for black people. Instead, he's done nothing but reap havoc and destruction on black people 
and destroyed our black communities. But folks will follow him to their grave because they're actually following the Democratic Party. It's similar to what we spoke about the other night. Uh, we spoke about the Haitian Revolution and how we said, yo, um, uh, 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 Tucson and, 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 uh, and, and um, what's the other brother name? Uh, uh, Mackendall and, 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 and Bookman, they looked at liberation as being the leader. So therefore, you didn't really have to have to have one leader. You had many leaders, but you had the the just the liberation itself, the thought, the imagery. That was the leader, and that was the motivation. You have blacks here, and and just to piggyback off of that, that's why they were able to become to 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 um, free themselves at the moment. You know what I'm saying? They were able to overthrow the most powerful. Um, uh, uh, armies in the world at that time with no help from other continents coming over but you have the same situation happening here in America where black people are looking towards the democratic party and they're looking at the Demo democratic party and saying that is our liberation voting is the key Marching is the key. We need to do stuff for all people so that we can get our freedom. So the Democratic Party, that's their liberation. That's what they look for. So in all in all, you had switch roles and Donald Trump was a, was a Democrat. Black folks would follow Donald Trump as well harder than what they follow him as being black conservatives or, rep or republicans black first they've forgotten the logic they've forgotten the ideology of Huey, um, Hen uh, Huey P. Newton which says we gotta do for self it's independency we have to create our own political party if we're gonna if we're gonna gain any political process within this um, society so they're following, so all in all, man, they're following a party and they're not following, uh, uh, they're following a party as their liberation and they're not following the Black First Code. So they were, they're not going to come off of this, this, this Biden um, wave that they're on. He won't be able to do anything wrong in that. eyes because he's a democrat and you know the, the the falsehood that we've been told is that the democrat he's he's uh, uh created this crime bill that I, I would never get over he's created mm. this crime bill uh, even though, even though he, uh, his uh, uh, vice president has locked up countless uh, of black men within prison, so many of them that they can actually make a collage with the brothers' faces. They can make a collage to make a Camilla Harris face. She's locked up so many between the two. They've locked up so many black men. With men with 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 these maximum sentences for 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 selling weed, things like that, man. Um, they've done it so much, man. Uh, but when you take a look at it, these uh, uh again, you have a lot of blacks who are just following a Democratic Party. So even though they're in it, they can't do anything wrong because this is the Democratic Party. Not only that, you have a lot of the the, the OGs that's still around, our elders that's still around, that remember the days of 
the, uh, Martin Luther King and the civil rights and the snake. They remember those days. And so when they look at Joe Biden, they see Martin Luther King. They see the civil rights movement, how we, we're almost there. We can accomplish things if we just continue to vote. Don't fight. Don't develop self-determination and self-independency. It's just all about it's just basically all about uh, um, the vote, rocking the vote. So, and all in all, brother, even the next president, whoever that may be, if, he bec if, if the next, next presidency is ran by the Democratic Party again, black folks are going to go for, are, are, are definitely going to place their bets, all their eggs in one basket on that Democratic Party. I mean, you know, that's 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 just the way it is. So we have to basically get out of that Moses and Exodus type mindset. You know what I'm saying? Where we're, can, where, where we're still remembering the past and saying things were better in the past and we can go back to the past. We got to look towards the future. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and um, in order for things to change, Things have to become um, more uncomfortable. It have to things have to become um, more destructive, and it, it has to get worse. Mm. I, I hate to say it like that. I, I, you know, I wish that it wasn't like that, but that's just the truth. Mm. When they, when they can pull up, when when it, when you have ancestors who drop blood on the ground that you walk that you walked on, when you have ancestors that was breeded. Brought from another continent, brought from another island, and was breeded, was raped at 10 or 12 years, 13 years old, and gave birth to the ancestor, the next ancestor, and the next one came, you know, then now we have our great grandfather and all of that stuff. When we see that, we understand it. When we can see as black folks that they forced our uncles and aunts to have incest so that they can breed a stronger black to work that plantation. We see it and understand it, but we look at these folks and say, well, not all of them are like that, and we place our faith into them. Like, How can you see that and still continue to vote for people who support that type of ideology that as black people, we should not reap any type of reparations. It's a smack in our face for all of those things I just named. And we say, yo, listen, we got ancestors that was here. We have other ancestors that was brought from another continent. All in all, they all was enslaved, enslaved, right? Not just in, not slavery, but they were enslaved, which was more of a mental they were, we were held against our will mentally as well, as well as physically. So we were enslaved, did not want to be in slavery. We, we, we um, created shoemakers and, and, and um, gas masks so that you can, you know, shoemakers so you can be able to have strong boots to go on to war when you, when you went to World War I. We created um, a gas mask so you can win the World War I. We saying we want our money back from that. We want it in the form of cash. We understand, again, we want the other things like we spoke about the other day. We want the land. We want the other. But in the form of cash, we want this back. <laughs> and when you can look at us and say, we understand what all of that stuff you guys have been through, but we're not even willing to entertain that conversation. Y'all go and have, you know, let me write up this bill, HR 40 bill, and y'all have, have, have to debate that amongst yourselves. Y'all go somewhere else with that. But when it comes to national television, when it comes to the media, when it comes to just addressing that, you're not even willing to say it. But they're going to be, they, they, they are about to help, they're about to, 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 to give unearned benefits to the, to, to, to the victims in the Ukraine. You know what I'm saying? And that whole Ukraine situation, Ukraine and Russia situation, they, are, they will do it. I'm just counting. I'm just counting down the days. Like, how, what's taking them? You know, what I'm saying they're going to do it. 
reparations for these folks didn't even they didn't sweat they didn't uh their ancestors didn't sweat over here in this land they didn't produce anything on this land but watch biden their biden administration along with kamala harris and stacy adams and all of them who's down with him watch them all agree to the fact yo we we got to help these folks out and get them up get them some sort of reparations in some sort of form any form but we got to give it to them but black sure. folks would stand here black folks would stand here and follow a party like that so again these folks are following a party and they're definitely following a man but they following a party we've been trained to do that brother we saw some of us, a wow. lot of blacks have woken up from out that spell, and a lot of blacks are are still stuck within that spell. Wow. That man. Man, you hit deep with that one. Now let me ask you a question too. You said Stacy Adams. Stacy Adams, are you are you talking about Stacy Abrams? Stacey Abrams, I'm sorry, brother. That's yeah, yeah, no, because because I was like at first I was like, is that her? No, because I'm thinking you talking about her sister. Because I I was trying to say, is that her sister? Because I know her sister is that her sister is that federal judge that was appointed by the Democratic uh, Party. I don't know if you know yeah, that, but her sister is a federal judge out there too. Yeah, no, I was talking about Stacey Abrams, my fault, okay. the one that you know. Um, the one that actually, the one that actually, she she's the one that actually lost. Well, she was, you know, second pick to Kamala Harris. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, let, let me let me let me ask you this too. Do you feel like it hasn't? It's, it, to me, it seems like it hasn't gotten that bad. You got gas at its all time high. Yeah, you have inflation at its all time high, but black folk. Always okay. Remember before when this stuff would be occurring and going on, you're gonna blame the person that's in office. So why is it we're gonna skip over the person that's in office right now? And why is it this guy's been in office two years? But I, my question is, the man already came out and said, why should he pay for what his ancestors did to our ancestors? That's not his problem. Why is it that we still are not convinced? The reason why I'm asking this question is because I almost feel like, and my question is to you, are we a gluttony for punishment as a racial group? Like you, like how you touched on how Jim Jones <laughs> was in the store <laughs> complaining about Gucci and all that. It just almost seems to me my question to you is, are we a gluttony for racial punishment? Wow. In all honesty, um, yes, we are. Because we're not willing to do what it takes to liberate ourselves. You see, we, we're still looking at, we're looking at the Democratic Party. We're looking at uh, whoever sits in that seat, whoever sits in that seat and we're saying we're going to serve them. It takes it, it reminds me of the movie Black Panther when um, uh, uh, it was time when Killmonger was able to gain power and he, you know, over the Wakanda Empire and. Uh, I don't. I, I know it was uh, Okoye, and I forgot the other one. Okoye and Nakia, I believe. I believe that's what that's their names. But it was one of the soldiers, the top soldiers from the Dominaje, and the spy. And she said to her, she said, "Come on, let's go. We must run. We must get away from this place." Um, and the soldier said, "I cannot leave." I have to serve whoever sits on that throne. That's what she said. So it takes me back to that issue. As blacks, we look at it and say, yo, as listen, and I'm not saying all blacks are necessarily um in that boat, but a lot of a lot of us, and it shows a lot of us, millions of us are saying, I'm gonna be loyal to whoever is on that throne in the Democratic Party. 
So if Joe Biden, you know, God forbid, passed away today, Kamala Harris becomes president, I'm going to be loyal to that throne, no matter who it is. The Clintons, um, you know, <laughs> if it's the Clintons, the Obamas, the Bidens, I'm going to be loyal to whoever sits on that throne. My, my thing is, what are we going to tell our children? We haven't done the necessary things that other races are willing to do. The immigrants coming over, the um, Asians, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Latinos or, or Spanish, or when they come over and they're able to vote, they're going to rock the vote for whoever is in the interest of their race group. They are willing to do whatever needs to be done to advance their race group. As black people, we are not in the position to where we are ready to do as a whole, right? we are ready to do what is necessary to advance our group. You know what I'm saying? Um, if we don't do it, if we're not willing to do it, then our race will die. And I don't mean just in physical, a physical death. That's some of it. I, I, I am strong, uh, a strong believer that you really can't exterminate every black person on the planet because our DNA is just everywhere. And it's just, it's everywhere. We, we got the power of melanin, but still politically, educationally, um, economically, our race will die out and we will be last if we're not willing to do what other races are willing to do to advance our group. So that means if, we're, if we see that this man has no interest at all in advancing black people, we have to be able to say, yo, you know what, regardless if we believe in voting and we believe or if we don't believe in voting, if we believe that the vote is going to get the change or if we believe that marching is going to get the change or if we believe that, uh, you know, infiltrating the power structure and start placing in policies and, and fighting for policies. And that way, if we're not willing to get in there and do these things our race group will not survive, period. We have to be able to say we're going to do this as a whole, regardless of our differences. We have to be able to get behind closed doors as black people and talk amongst ourselves. Nobody else is invited in. We're not inviting in colored folks. We're not inviting in the brown people, the yellow people, the, um, the, the white people. We're not inviting in any other group. We're talking black. We're living black. We're going to support black. And that's what it stands for. We're not going to care what any other group or what the, what they have to say, how they chose, how they choose to service us, because we can service ourselves. We can speak for ourselves. We can develop our own political party. Huey Newton put this into place along with the Black Panthers, show that we can do it. And then just to further push it, Dr. Claude Anderson has advised us to continue that mode, but to take it to another level. We're not that radical. So therefore, if we're not willing to be radical, if we're not willing to make this change, then we're going to be subject to the treatment that we are receiving right now, which is the punishment. Like what you spoke about, just being uh, a gluttony to the punishment, a gluttony to the destruction. And so in a big way, we become just like the people we actually hate. We hate white supremacy. Black people hate white supremacy. The majority of blacks. Uh, we're not talking about the Sambos. But the majority of blacks hate white supremacy. However, white supremacy is willing to do us in at any cost. And they're not willing to let up. They're not willing to apologize. And as a matter of fact, I'm not, I don't even care about an apology, but they're not even willing to do that as a whole, just as a whole, but following up that apology with some money. They're not willing to do that. We see it. Um, so all in all, bro, yes, we will continuing to be subject to it and it's nationwide. 
if we, I give props to the black hit blacks here in America because we have shown signs, signs. I mean, there's video footage and all of that where we've tried to be the peaceful and do it Martin Luther King, you know, do it his way of nonviolence. Um, and it didn't work. So you've seen other folks hop on the Elijah Muhammad and uh, uh, Ma uh, Malcolm X and, and other brothers like that. And uh, um, um, we've seen them hop on that bandwagon and say, we're going to fight back. Not just, you know, not just with our minds, but we literally are going to fight back. Like you're not going to, you're, you're not going to pull out a water hose on me and I'm going to just turn my back. I'm trying to punch you in your face. If I got a weapon, I'm going to try to take your life. If I, if I, uh, if I don't have a weapon, I'm going to make a weapon out of anything and take your life. Cause you're trying to take my life. You understand? I'm going to, I'm going to know my rights, uh, for bearing an arm so that when you see us, you know, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? So you, I give props to the blacks here in America. We've shown signs that we will fight back and we can do it. We just don't do it as a whole. It's just in small pockets. Yeah, um, the, you, you're right about that. You're right about that. And then, but then when you go to, but then when you go to, um, you know, blacks that's living in, um, the, uh, uh, in Africa, blacks living in, in the Caribbean and other islands, um, they pretty, they, they have a high tolerance for that white treatment, for that um, mistreatment, for that um, white um, superiority and black inferiority. Like they tolerate it so much in all aspects. Like they just tolerate it. And it's become a norm to them. Now I know that there are other Caribbean brothers and sisters and native born African brothers and sisters and other, they, they will, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do something. They will step up. We've seen this with, certain people like Thomas Sankara and Maurice Bishop, you know what I'm saying? Yomo Kenyatta, like we've seen it where th these brothers would step up and start an army, you know what I'm saying? And, and fight white supremacy and only white supremacy. Like they'll, they target is white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that, again, that's small pockets. And for them, it comes, it's one dime in a dozen. For us, it's a consistent fight over here in America. So there are blacks who do um, get up and say, we're going to do something about this. But you also have the other blacks that kind of hold it down, that th those are the blacks that they place on TV and they say, hey, we need to be peaceful because that's what simmers it down. Peaceful, go your way. They don't want us to be revolutionaries and, and revolutionize the game. Um, they always send the elders out. To tell us to chill out. It's all about nonviolence. You know, they just preach that stuff. So, so brother, it's it's we're gonna continue to be subject to that. Then when you take a look at um just Biden himself, it's a lot of folks, a lot of white folks who perceive um their life structure that way, where they say, Well, my ancestors, is I didn't do the same thing as my aunt, but you still the problem is behind you saying that is that number one. Um, you're trying to self-project. You understand that you're guilty. So you're trying to make us feel guilty when we're, we're really the victims. Um, we're the victims of your so-called supremacy. Your new world order, we're, we are the victims of your new world order. There would be no new world order if it wasn't for us. The only part that we played in it was the relationship structure mentally they was able to grab a hold of our our um uh, uh uh our mentality and able to shape and shift our views on ourselves and our views on our people and our views most importantly on liberation they shifted it using religion along with other tools but the strongest tool they used was religion you know what i'm saying so um you still reap the benefits Every white person living here in America reaps the benefit of our ancestors' hardcore labor. There was a war on our labor. We could not win that war. You know what I'm saying? But they still reap the benefits, and then they want to turn around and say, well, 
not all of us did it to you guys. Um, because your ancestors' blood still lives in you, you're still doing it. Unless you are willing to swap lives. We don't, I don't want you to give us anything. Don't give us anything. Just swap it. Just swap your life. Guarantee they wouldn't want to do that. Because now that means they have to give up their comfortability. Everything that makes them comfortable. Everything that pushes their success. Everything that they've uh, not worked hard for. <laughs> they have to give that all up. They have to give up um, the uh, appearance of being superior. They walk around with this mentality. And for those whites who are like, well, you know, we have black friends and we have black. So we're all not like that. Not all of us are like that. Yeah. OK, you may not be like that with, with your present state of mind. However, if I were to lay it out and say, yo, are you willing to give up your benefits and your income? Are you willing to give up your benefits and education? You know what I'm saying? Are you willing to, to, to stop this onslaught of false information given out in schools and give us true world history in every aspect? Like you're not willing to do these things. Are you willing to are you willing to set our brothers and sisters free from prison who don't even belong there? What about our brothers and sisters who are in these um uh, uh crazy houses and all like that and mental institutions who don't belong there? What about our children that you guys have helped kidnap by saying, well, uh putting the notion out there and the propaganda out there that the mother or the father is just emotionally then erect. They're not, they're incapable of taking care of their children. Uh, we got an anonymous call from a neighbor. So we're coming to get this child and we're going to put them in a the child service. You got to go through child services and all of that stuff. ACS to try to get your, your child back. Like that's crazy. It's legally, they're, they're, they're legally kidnapping our children. Like, it's, it's, are you willing to stand up against these type of things? That's a fact. On, on, top, on, top of that, on top of that, watching us get our money, our grants, our loans, without having to pay a dime back, and you not feeling some sort of way like you should be a part of that. Like, are you willing to do that? They're not. No white person on this planet, even the white people who's, who fought, they're not willing to do that. You know, in, it's not in their nature. And, and, and let me just piggyback off that real quick. What you're saying is so on point and correct because I've always used the Dr. Francis Quest Welsing statement. Tell us what is being said when we're not in the room. I don't need you to march. I don't need you to repeat the whining and the rhetoric and the Black Lives Matter. And I don't need none of that. You know, this is personally... This is what I feel like we need. We need those people in that book, J. Edgar Hoover's Secret FBI, The Burglary. A lot of people have not read that book. They need to read that book. I've read it a couple, no, I probably read it about four or five years ago. And it's a great book to this day. I had one of my, uh, one of my uh, um, ex-co-workers, white, white uh, brother that work with us and he, he had those sentiments of oh you know you, you should be a democrat and all this other stuff and i started breaking shit down to him and like kind of telling him and i said hey man you need to read this book called the burglary j edgar hoover's secret fbi and in that book all the characters are white and it's 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 not fake so it's 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 a real book these are real events that took place and these white motherfuckers these white people broke in the FBI building, got the papers, and then they took them to different printing, uh, uh, I would say printing stops where, you know, like at a school where you go to library, you can print stuff out. They printed out the documents that they received and made copies of them. And then they mailed them to different uh, news outlets back then. So back then they mailed it to like the post and stuff like that. Well, their lives were immediately in danger because they broke into the FBI building. So they were like America's most wanted. 
That's what we need because they didn't have to do that. And I'm not praising them. See, that's the thing. There's a difference between giving people props and then making them your idol God. And I feel right. like black folk, a lot of the times we do that. And, and, and I, I can only compare it to the history that I've learned. Now, if you look at the John Browns of the world, the Keith Forsyth, well, I mentioned Keith because that was the guy who actually picked the, the FBI lock to break into the building. And then there was a young woman. I forgot all of it. I just remember his name the most because he was the one who had to learn how to pick the locks. And when they got that information, low key, they could have just sat on the information and not did anything because it didn't have nothing to do with them. It had everything to do with black people. And I feel like that time in that era, there were more other racial groups. We can say the dominant society that were more like, no, nah, that ain't right. So we need to do something about it. We don't have that here now. See, those people in that book, they didn't march, whine, and repeat. They did something constructive to replace the system of racism and establish a system of justice. That's why I always tell people, read that book, man, because a lot of these other racial groups, they feel as if they're doing their part by marching. Now, did those white folk in that book march and do that? Yes, Yes, they went to jail and they marched and they did all that, but they also broke into a building and found real tangible evidence on what the United States of America's government had planned against foundational black Americans or native black folk. Now, when you can bring us those type of people to assist us in establishing a system of justice, I feel like that's what we need. We don't need people assuming that they're helping us by marching are tweeting some Black Lives Matter stuff. I, we don't need that. We, we got enough of that. I think it's now it's time to start calling other Black folk out that are making other racial groups idol gods right in front of our faces because they're just particularly nice to them. You know, I, I'm not tripping if other racial groups are nice to us. That doesn't bother me or if they're, 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 they're rude to us. What bothers me is we don't hold other racial groups to a certain standard when they conduct themselves around us and how they conduct themselves. We allow people to just come amongst us and do certain things. And we're not holding them to that standard of the John Brown. John Brown died, got hung. All his family got hung behind him wanting liberation for black folk. And I feel like we need to take it back to that. I don't need you. And the reason why I'm saying this now is because look, look at, what has transpired in this subject matter that we're talking about? You got a white man, right, that's in office, right? And we get it. Nobody has ever sat down and said, why do they keep giving us white people to run the country? Why do they keep it? Why can't be a black person? Why that can't be the standard? Why does it always have to be some white man that went to the, uh, the specific schools, the skull and bone schools? Like, why we can't have, why we can't vet out these people that they're giving us? Why are we not holding, like, why did everybody not hold Stacey Abrams to a higher standard? Why did everybody just allow her, and I'm talking about everybody black folk, just allow her and Keisha LaMami Bottoms just talk crazy to black people because we started questioning what they were doing? Like, why did that not happen? And another thing, too, I, I think about this often, too, my brother. Why is it we won't question Every other racial group on the BS and bullshit that they got going on, but we will question ourselves on every little. We go so hard on ourselves and each other, but when it comes to other racial groups, we just not only give them a pass, we just let them use us as a doormat. They only come around when they need something, and once they get it, they're gone. Look at Joe Biden, for an example. He told Ice Cube, we'll talk to you after the election. So we want to see what the, because basically if we lose, we ain't got shit to talk to you about. And if we win, we ain't got shit to talk to you about. They won. They still ain't really spoke to Ice Cube about his contract with Black America. They ain't even mentioned the word Black. And what I'm saying is, so you can understand where I'm coming from, my brother, is this. We need to start putting the pressure on people around us that are just allowing other racial groups to come in here and benefit. And I'm not just talking about politics. I'm talking about hip hop, R&B, all that. For an example, I watched 
the Drink Champs interview and they had the rapper the game on there. And he said, man, I'm better than Eminem. You know how many niggas jumped down his throat about that? And I'm like, well, yeah, I think he better than him too because what he's doing is more relatable to our culture than what Eminem is doing. And nobody even understands that because they're so busy making that guy their idol god in hip-hop. They'll put Eminem over Nas, Jay-Z, Big E, Pac. They'll put him over corrupt all these legendary lyricists because he resembles Cesare Borgia or, or, or the, the white god. You know what I mean? The, the white idol god. And I feel like we need to get out of that because then we start arguing with each other about it. And then it becomes a whole nother topic that doesn't need to be said. Because in my personal opinion, I feel like if we would stop making other racial groups idol gods, people wouldn't be following behind Joe Biden the way they are. They wouldn't be so convinced to follow behind him. That's what I'm saying. Because look at it now. Look at it. Gas is $6 a gallon. We in another war that ain't got nothing to do with us, right? You sending $30 billion over there, but you ain't even looking at no black folk. But black folk will argue you down. I don't know what's worse for, for black folk. Black religion, and when I mean, I mean Americanized white religion that black folk take on, or politics. Because those two, you cannot convince black folk to think outside the box. They will argue you down. Another example, I was raised you just vote Democrat. And I said, why? Because we just vote Democrat. No real stats and, 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 and no facts and figures on why am I voting Democrat. It's just you vote Democrat. And I think that's what's killing us because we're just doing it just because it was a generational thing. We're not really thinking outside the box and asking for tangibles. Look at it, my brother. Just look at what's going on. You know, before it would be put on who's ever in office. All of a sudden, they're not putting this on, on Mr. Biden. It's almost kind of like it's the Russians' fault. No, that's, that's to me, three-card Monty or some look at my left hand and not my right hand. You know what I mean? You're like, what? that doesn't make sense. I'm blaming the person that's in the Pacific realm of power that governs the United States of America Incorporated and you got us in some shit that don't got nothing to do with us. I'm tired of them always saying that it always has something to do with. You know what has something to do with us? Reparations for black folk building the country for free, like you said. That's what has everything to do with us. And that's got everything to do with everybody that comes here because, as Dr. Claude Anderson teaches, they're here for unearned benefits. So why is it when we start talking like this, why don't we hold Stacey Abrams and them accountable? I I don't know if you saw it, but did you see it when 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 uh Keisha Bottoms start going off on the black people? How dare y'all tear up the Ted Turner bill? Like she was scolding black folk and dog whistling to white people. And it's like we do that because we want trinkets. We want Hansel and Gretel crumbs for the dom dominant society. So a lot of these black politicians, they don't want to change the system. They just want to maintain it and live comfortable in it. Because we, and I mean me, you as a group, we don't hold them accountable. We just allow them to do it. And they don't allow you to get close to people like uh, Kamami Harris because they know what's going to happen. If she gets asked real questions, they know that. And that's why they just move her right along. Look what she did to Charlemagne. He said, I feel like Joe Biden's not even the president. He's the president. His name is Joe Biden, and I'm Kamala Harris, and his name is Joe Biden, and his name is Joe Biden. She just kept saying it over and over again, scolding him from a standpoint of condescension. Like, don't play with me over on, on this podcast. I'm Kamala Harris, and I'm like, wow, you can't even say nothing about him without them getting emotional because they have socialized us and engineered us that how dare you go against your master? Yo, God, how dare you do that? And then they send the other Negroes, like you said, the Sambos and the Coons, and the telling about the gun line bosses and the Hayward Shepherds. They send them there to dry snitch and co opt the movements that we got going on because that's what happens. I'm telling you, I'm reading this book right now called Stolen. It's about, you know, uh, white folk kidnapping black folk and putting them into slavery. And this, this one family, the Cannons, that's that's in there. And I'm about to get another book about them. Her name is Patty Cannon. 
and they were just horrible, corrupt people, but they were so intelligent. They were like, well, we'll just get the niggas to kill, uh, kidnap other niggas because we can just pay them because everybody has a price. A lot of people's prices are cheap. Some people's prices are expensive. But while we're up here having a price, why don't we start holding people accountable that look like us? And I mean, like when they want to be in office, why do you think you can help my people? You know what I mean? Because I think they run on the, well, I'm black, my brother, you black. So, you know, just vote me in. No, nigga. Like we need to stop doing that because we have not gotten, we have not received nothing. Obama was in there for eight years, my brother. You, you got black folks still talking about Obama did a good job for us. But then when you ask him, what is one thing that he did specifically for black folk? And they say we're divisive. So I think we need to start taking that back. And back to my original point, when white folk or any other racial group come, what are they telling you when, you, when you're not in the room? If they're not telling you what's being said when you're not in the room, then there are no, they're not an ally and they're not no help to you. They're just in the way. They're just your friend. I'm not, that, I'm not saying that other racial groups can't be your friend. And I'm not, I'm not saying that. You know what I mean? But specifically, I've, I've been saying this, my brother. You date outside your race, you do whatever. I ain't tripping off that. You know what I'm saying? I'm tripping off this. Whoever you dating, if they're not telling you what's being said in the room when you're not in the room, then they're not an ally. They're a liability to you. And you need to get somebody that can move in those sectors and corners that you can't so they can come back and tell you, hey, these are some racist people right here. This is what they said, Warren, and this is what they said, David. And that's what you want. You don't want nobody in there just want to hang out with you on some fetishize and shit. We don't need that. We need people that's really telling us what's being said when we're not in the room, my brother. And I just wanted to say that, man, because I feel like a lot of the times, often, we don't hold these black folk accountable that pretending like they really have our best interests at heart. We don't hold them accountable. We just sit up there and let them do whatever the hell they want to do. We allow them to tell us who who our top 10 is in, in rap. And I'm bringing that up because you should see everybody like jumping on the game's case because he said he was better than Eminem. I know a lot of rappers that are better than Eminem. But niggas don't want to say it because niggas don't want to offend that white boy as if he's some type of God in the in the house, in the realms of hip hop. That's why I got so much love for Lord Jamar, because he called that white boy out, said, no, nigga, you're a guest in the house of hip hop. You didn't create it and you're a guest and you ain't really that dope anyway. And then the nigga got mad, tried to do a diss record, and Lord Jamar was like, I don't do diss records, but I don't care what you said. I'm still standing on what I said. And you know what? Lord Jamar not only stood on it, he had to, Eminem had to come out and say, Lord Jamar is right. I am a guest in the house of hip hop. See, you got to start holding these people accountable, man. No matter who gets mad at you. You know what I'm saying? Like Dr. Claude Anderson teaches too. It's a team sport. And if you piggyback off of Nearly Fuller Jr.'s book, remember, he said, until they prove to you they're not a white supremacist, they're suspected white supremacists. They gotta prove it to you. So I can't just co-sign them for you. You gotta, you vet them out too. And so you could be like, nah, Warren, that's some suspect shit. Them motherfuckers might be on some racist shit. We need to start doing that to each other. And not to each other on some, we just trying to do that to break up a happy home and all that. I'm not tripping on, I'm talking about you date somebody that's from another racial group and they white or they Asian or whatever and they can move up in a power structure within the corporate plantation or something and they can tell you what's really going on and they not telling you that's, an, that's a liability, that's not an asset and that's not an ally and I feel like the same thing with politics you know, I'm tired of us going for whoever is likable no, we need to go with whoever's going to give black folk tangibles and I feel like a lot of us sit back and allow these other uh, coons and sambos to tell us what's good for us because it's beneficial for them. That's why they do that. And we just need to start holding them accountable like Stacey Abrams. Hold her accountable. Keisha Lamami Bottoms. All these people that's sitting up here running with this democratic rhetoric. You, we should start... Well, why do you think y'all party is good? For? Tell me what y'all have done and give me the facts and how it's trickled down to black people. Don't be giving me no minority coalition bullshit. Because when you say minority, you're talking about white women too. So I don't want to hear that. But when you start saying that, we become divisive. So I just think that 
we have to start holding people to a higher standard. And when other racial groups come around thinking that they're doing something for us, brother David, we need to start digging in the crates, as they would say, and going back in history and start saying, okay, well, are you doing anything like the white brothers and sisters did to help black folk in the burglary? Well, what's that? You need to go read that book. Are you willing to jeopardize your life and do all that other stuff? That one sister, she went into hiding for 15, 20 years. She wouldn't come up out of hiding because they had her in America's Most Wanted. They had her picture everywhere. Because this was the white woman that went into the FBI building, scoped it out, acted like she needed to see it, take a tour, and then they broke in that mother. So they had her picture everywhere. So I want to see where are those people at? Where, where are those people? Where are those? I don't need nobody marching. We just allow people to get off easy, my brother. Think about it in this day and this time. Gas, I'm going to keep saying it, gas, $6 a gallon, and we ain't set up there and said, hey, uh, all you Biden sexuals in the Democratic Party, excuse my language and my friends, but why the fuck is gas damn near $10 a gallon and you got us in a war that ain't got shit to do with us, excuse my friends. But I'm just saying, why do y'all, what is this? Nobody will do it. Everybody is, in my personal opinion, whistling, acting like they, they just benign neglect. But not neglecting what Joe Biden is doing. It's like what he's doing don't even exist to, to black folk. And gas, I look, five dollars a gallon, two gallons is ten dollars. So imagine how much you going it's gonna take for you to fill up your tank, but you don't even want to place blame on where it needs to be due. And that's where I feel like we're suffering the most. We don't want to start holding people accountable at all. Even on the jobs. We, me and my own girl, we was talking um yesterday too. Uh uh, my brother and we worked at Corbin Plantation. We were talking about like how many black folk will get into these little fictitious positions of power and they get to treat black folk like shit. And I'm like, and I never, I just never understood that. And, and it bothered me. It bothers still to this day. It bothers me. Like, how do you sleep at night and you treating your, I don't care who you date. I don't care. That, that don't got, I don't care. I, I just don't understand. How do you do that? Because, it, it, you know, like, I don't understand that because I'll never forget uh, my Latino homeboy. He's Guatemalan. He told me, he said, that guy gets no respect from me because he's treating his people fucked up. And he was like, and I don't blame you for being like that towards him too because he's supposed to be looking out for y'all. So why is it every other racial group knows that that's wrong, but we don't know what's wrong? And I'm starting to be a little long-winded because I'm thinking about everything that you've been saying. And I'm like, man, he's not lying. Like, we, what'd you say? We don't want to fix it. <laughs> uh, we don't want to fix it. And uh, they loathe uh, Biden. You're right. You're right. They, they love him. There is nothing you can say or do to, to take away from this man. And you're right. That man has had a career, a, a career history of doing horrible things to black folk. And black folks still act like, you know, in my personal opinion, like he can't do no wrong. He is... Joe Biden is, and I'm going to leave with this, Joe Biden is our Cesare Borgia. He is our Jesus Christ right now to black folk. Straight up. And I'm going to leave off with that, man. Do you got any last uh, final words, my brother? Man. That's crazy. Yo. It's, it's, I mean, you hit, you hit so many points. You hit so many points, man. And I understand, I understand why you on fire like that, man. Because we're looking at people who are supposedly uh, our black leaders, you know, the black caucus and every, and they are sitting there not doing anything. But when it's time to vote, they're out there doing the electric slide. Like, what are you doing? And it's, it's, everything you said is a, is a 100% truth. But you also know what, man, just to add to that, White uh, white people have been looked at as our saviors for the longest period of time. So they play the role of Santa Claus in our, um, our way of living. They create the problem. Then they back out, watch us destroy each other. Then they come back in offering empty goods to us 
Meanwhile, we continue to see each other as the enemy because what you're offering me, black person to black person, is just death and destruction, mistrust. But what mm -hmm. this white man or white woman is offering to me is opportunity, employment opportunity, unemployment opportunities. They're offering me uh, less. I, I, listen, I don't. I don't have to do five. I don't have to do two years. I can do thirty days if I just plead guilty. They, you know. I, if 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 I need a lawyer, I'm looking for a black lawyer, but I can't get one. But that white man is the one that comes in, or that white woman is the one who comes in. So if you get off, and you're not going to prison, who looks like your savior? You know what I'm saying? And and this is this is something that is just it's always been that way. It's the same. It's is is one of the biggest reasons why folks over there in Africa is so much into the white worship like they worship they believe they're worshiping god but they're actually worshiping white whiteness queen and zinga queen and thimba and all of them right uh they have tried that the whites when they when the portuguese was trying to take over angola they were literally plant churches on top of our ancestors' grave sites. Mm. They would literally do this, but you still have black folks who would fight against them, Queen and Zynga, but you also had the other black folks who are a different type of breed fighting for the whites against the blacks. Slavery wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't if it wasn't for blacks infiltrating other black tribes and all like that to right. capture us or to give away the secrets, a white Joe Biden or even Barack Obama, they would not be able to get away with more than half of the stuff they get away with if we didn't have black people on the inside fighting for them, fighting against us. I remember, homie, when... When Keisha, Lamb Keisha, Keisha Lance Bottoms was chastising blacks down here, um, here in Georgia, I remember the I remember the day, brother, when she had uh, it was a couple of college students who had gotten you know it was during the protest, um, and it was it was a brother, a couple of college students had got pulled out of their car. It was getting, you know, pounded on by the police, all of that, man. It was it was about 20, 20 cops out there pounding on these on these college students, man. And Keisha Lance Bottoms, a couple of weeks after that, instead of defunding the police, I know some people are for it and some people are against it, but a lot of people were screaming out, defund the police. She actually gave them a raise. The Atlanta police. She granted them a raise. And this is after Rashad Brooks got killed, bro. This is Keisha Lance Bottoms doing this. And then... Yeah, man. She, yeah, then she's the first one on TV um, here in Atlanta talking about let's get our shots. And she's down, talking about she's posting on Twitter, Twitter how her and her boys got the shots and how she's so, you know, happy of her and her boys and like the question I asked earlier, what are you going to tell your children? Because when it came time to fight a power structure that is oppressing your people, not just your family, not just your little rich family, but your people, when it comes time to it, to tell them and explain to them what you have done, you can't tell them anything. You haven't done anything. And these people, these people, brother, they are a different breed of blacks. I mean, they, they are a different breed of blacks, and this is why they will not fight um, for us, truly, like in all aspects. You know what I'm saying? This is why they won't do it. They won't go tirelessly. Like you had a Malcolm X who was tirelessly fighting for black folks who said, listen, maybe we can't take this to the civil court, or maybe we can't take, let's, let's go to the world court. America needs to be held guilty. You know what I'm saying? For all of the crimes. So it's you had folks like that 
pure black, but then you have people who are, man, they, they, DNA structure is not that of a true black. It's just, it's, it's just like the saying that uh, blacks sold other blacks into slavery, which it, people say that, but they don't, they, they say that with little information about it. These were blacks who was breeded or who had children by the, 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 the outsider and the offspring of that outsider took the side of his father. His father raised him how to be a slave owner and a slave catcher. So that black that looks like us, that's been gone for uh, about 20 years, when they come back, they are not the same black. They have a mindset of their father. And their father was slave owners and slave generals, slave masters. So we're not looking at the same type of black. So when we see people like the black car, the black um, uh, carcass and uh, our black leader, so-called leaders or the, the black folks that we see with Biden, um, the Biden administration, when we see the blacks who support him, these are not the same blacks. I'm talking about the blacks who support Biden over blacks. Like you're a dem mm. you, you call yourself a Democrat before you call yourself a black. You look out for the interests of a Democratic Party, but you before looking out for the interests of your own people, not colored people, not people of color, and not the LGBTQ, Q, ABC, whatever. You're not looking. You're looking out. You have to look out for the for the interest of your black folk. You're not doing that. So this is not the same type of breed that we're looking at. They are a different type of black folk, bro. And I think as soon as all blacks, when we get that, when we actually grab onto that concept that just because they look like us don't mean that they're for us. In the Byzantine Empire, you also had slave generals. In the Roman Empire, you had you had uh, uh, I mean, in the Byzantine Empire, you had black uh, uh, slave generals. You had black generals there. In the Roman Empire, you had black generals there as well, helping trying to conquer Africa and the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like so, this is just you know uh, something that we have to be able to look at and see. And say, yo, at the same time, they look like us. Again, they, 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 they say that they're for us, but they're really not. We're not looking at the same. We can't see ourselves in that individual. And this is why I, I, I definitely um, believe that when we build our own nation, starting mentally first, we can exile those people. Because after all, black people are... After being treated properly, being in an environment where you feel welcome, you're not going to feel comfortable when you're exiled from that community. Right now, a lot of black folks feel comfortable being in that democratic community. I just have to vote and get out and that's good. I just have to go out and protest and that's that I did my job. I'm fighting for justice. I'm fighting for social justice. We never asked for social justice. We asked to stop being lynched. What are you talking about? So when we get out that mindset and build our own nation, then we have something going. We can exile those folks. Um, we can, we, we, we can could, could, because our form of community would be true justice. True justice established because true justice established is the peace. We've been lacking that peace. We need our own community type of peace. That's our justice. You know what I'm saying? As well as in other forms when you talk about law and everything else. Yes. So I definitely believe, brother, I, I, I believe like you say, yo, black nation and we have to be black first, but we have to throw away. That comes along with throwing away our white gods. Joe Biden is a white god. We, gotta, we have to throw that away. A lot of folks are not willing to throw that away. He goes to churches and talk, you know, so we feel a lot of black folks feel like, man, he's like us. He's he's us. He's just like us when he's not. You know what I'm saying? Um, so 
I can't get with it, bro. Especially if you're talking about giving out crack pipes and all of that. That's your form of reparation. It's crack pipes to us. It's, it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, before I end, I just want to, before I, I finish up, man, I just wanted to address that, the, 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 the Eminem situation that you talked about. I agree with that. And I was about ready to really do something live on that too because that kind of disgusts me. They're setting Eminem up to be the greatest rapper of all time. That's how they're setting him up. Talking about how he has the most gold albums, a single soul, the most platinum this and the most platinum that soul. I'm like, yo, you can look at it because this is what they do. They set it up first. They don't just hit you in the mouth. They set it up, you know, a couple of, you know, some years before that. And then they hit you and you're like, oh, it wasn't nothing new. They kind of desensitize you to it. And um, I agree with you. Eminem is definitely not the best rapper. Um, him kneeling at the Super Bowl pay, pays no dividends to me at all. Um, because when it all comes down to it, like Jada Kiss said, when you start talking that crazy, kill them up, shoot them up stuff, that's them white folks out there buying that stuff. They purchase that. Like, we live it out here. We see it. So we're trying to get away from it. But then you have those ignorant ones who brag about it. But for the most part, the real MCs, they're trying to get away from that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when Eminem was talking about killing his mother and all that, that wasn't us buying his stuff. That was his folks buying it. And it just goes to show, even though Eminem is white, being in a black um, entertainment not black ran, but just black majority um, participation, his folks, his white folks are still going to support him. A million people is going to, a million white folks is going to buy his albums. It's going to buy his singles. They're going to support him no matter what nonsense he put out because he puts out a lot of nonsense. He's nice. He's gifted, but he puts out a lot of nonsense, a lot of hatred that nobody talks about. When he talked about killing his mother, that was not talked about. If a black talk yeah, about right. if a black person talked about killing their mother and driving them off the 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 the, the um, bridgeway and drowning them, oh my gosh! And writing the letter to Stan, if a black person talked about that, we'll be demonized. Period. They would have made an example out of us. So it just goes to show. So I hope that as black people, we can be able to see this and say, "Yo, we have to run our own entertainment." We have to run it. We have to run it. Rather we infiltrate it or we start over. We have to run it. You know what I'm saying? Um, because right now the internet is our best friend, but it's also our worst enemy because we have, you know, access to these things that we can just become overnight success. But at the same time, we're still scattered. It's really a mindset of having black nation. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I agree with you, brother. He's definitely not one of the best. I know a lot of battle rappers who will eat him alive. That's why he won't go into battle rap. There's battle rap out there in Cali and all of that in the West Coast. There's battle rap down here in Georgia. They won't, he, I've never seen him there. He won't come there. He won't be here. He won't compete. Why don't he compete? Show how, how good you really are. Because there's a lot of black dudes down there that would eat him up and destroy his career. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, when it all comes down to it, man, um, it's all about Black Nation. We got to be black first, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I totally agree. That's facts, man. I appreciate you uh, coming on tonight, man. That's been our time. Uh, I appreciate you. Yeah, man. I appreciate you coming. That's been our time. I know you you hours ahead of us, man, so I ain't going to hold you on, man. We're going to try to get something going next week on Monday, man. We're going to try to get it going, man. So I'm going to hit you up. I'll just DM you, and then we'll figure out a time and get it going then, all right? All right, my brother. Yo, you stay safe right. out there, man. All right, you too, my brother. I'll holler at you on Monday.